Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum and hello to everyone. Okay, so uh, I'm Daniel. So today we will discuss and I will share with you about an interesting topic. Ah, oh, okay. So the topic is still under the education, but the keyword is or the different part is this is about the Muslim perspective. Are you here? Yes. About the Muslim. Muslims, yes, Muslims perspective. So this is about the Muslim perspective on education and schooling. Okay, so before we go to the deep, 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 deep explanation about the Muslims perspective on education and schooling, so we have to know how Islam's view education. Okay, so how Islam's views education. Okay, so. Certain people say that Islam is strict about education. Islam is more behind in terms of education, uh, rather or uh, compared to the Westerns. So, what is education in Islamic perspective? How Islam views education? Okay, so um, we started with a uh, recitation of Holy Quran. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اقرأ بسم ربك الذي خلق خلق الإنسان من علق اقرأ وربك الأكرم الذي علم بالقلم علم الإنسان ما لم يعلم صلّى الله عليه وسلم. and this verse of Holy Quran is from the chapter or from Surah Al Alaq, the famous ah the first revelation of the Quran Karim. okay, so what can we understand from this verse of ah Al Quran, from this Quranic recitation? Okay, so the first word which is about the no no not the Bismillah part, but the first ayah. What is? What is? Yes, Iqra. Iqra. When we translate literally to the English dictionary, so the meaning is recite, recite, or read it, read. Ah, like that. Okay, so the word read does not literally means read. Read does not ah did not literally means you read everything, you can look no, but the word reading itself has a deeper deeper explanation, which is the word read. It shows about the acquiring knowledge in Islam, the importance of acquiring knowledge in Islam to seek knowledge in Islam. True, yakra. Through reading means you read the material, you read the research, you read the Quran and the Tafsir, and you read the Hadith, and you you gain the knowledge from it. You gain the knowledge from what you have read. So this is the true meaning or the deeper meaning about the word um, read or ikra itself from the Surah Al Alaq. Mashallah, Mashallah. How beautiful is it in Islam, right? Okay. So yes. So there are many verses that talk and mention about the ain, about the knowledge. So in the Lughat al-Arabiya or in the Arabic um language, so they refer the knowledge or education ah to the tarbiya, to the words of taalim, to the words of taqdim. Okay, so the three words are important um in mentioning or referring to the education. Okay, so there are many verses of Quran that uh, mention about the importance of education that shows to the Muslims, to us, to all the peoples, or how importance of education is. Okay, so yes, among it is uh, in Surah Al-Quran, uh, in Quranic verse, 
أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يرفع الله الذين آمنوا منكم والذين أوتوا علم درجات. So the meaning is Allah will lift up um, the rank or the position of people who have knowledge rather than people uh, um, rather than other people. Means Allah will hire up people with knowledge and have faith in Allah rather than other people. Okay, so other verse or uh, Quranic verse also mention about it, which is A'udhu Billahi Min Shaitan Ar-Rajim Qul Hal Yistawi Alladheena Ya'lamoon Wa Alladheena La Ya'lamoon Means Allah made us to think, made us to reason Is there any difference between people who know and people who didn't know? Yes, it's actually the big difference between the people who know and people who did know people who knowledge and people who did who didn't they did not have any knowledge so you can see the big difference so yes this is among the quranic verse that mention about how importance of acquiring knowledge or education in islam so there it is okay so in islam okay i want to share you something so in islam if we look to the historical in islam education so islam reach its peak on education and knowledge uh, in the golden age. I mean, Islam needs everything in the golden age. Islam needs in terms of knowledge in uh, chemistry, in physics, in uh, medicine, in psychology and everything in the golden age because the, uh, because the desire to know what the knowledge and they meet it with the, yes, Sharia. Al-Islamiyah means the revealed knowledge. Okay, so okay, I like to share with you about a quotes or notes by Said Muhammad Al-Naqib al attas in 1979. So he mentioned that the comprehensive and integrated approach to education Islam is directed toward the balanced growth of the total personality through training man's spirit intellectual, rational self, feelings, and bodily sense such that faith is infused into the whole of his personality. So, Said Naku al mentioned that education in Islam does not, uh, does not build up the spirit, uh, spirituality uh, part only, but Islam education also uh, focus on mental capability uh, intellectual capability and also the physical uh, capability so when we mention about mental so yes the emotion when we mention about the intellectual capability means uh, sciences or everything that are related to yes to the knowledge so this is how Islam emphasizes education okay so Okay, okay, so enough from Islamic perspective on education. So I like to share with you something that really interesting. So this is from Ibn Sina. So yeah, do you know Ibn Sina? I can hear you. Yes, you know Ibn Sina. So Ibn Sina, or if you did not uh, hear before this about Ibn Sina, you must hear uh, the name of Ever Sina. Eversina. So Eversina is the uh, Western's name that Western gives to the Ibn Sina. The, the, uh, yes. Okay, so Eversina, this is, uh, he is a, a famous philosopher in Islam. So he leads um, in terms of knowledge in medicine. Okay, so he, uh, he wrote the book, uh, the, wow, okay, he wrote the book, the Al Qanun. Uh, we translate it in the Westerns naming as the canon. Okay, so in this book about this book about medicine, yes, medicine, not about education, but in this uh what we call what this book, I forgot. Yes, the canon. In this the canon book, he mentioned he mentioned about how important the child growth from the embryo state until yes. He reach the certain age which he can create. He can create. He or she can create her or his career. Okay. So, okay. So, in the book, uh, in the canon, 
So Ibn Sina really emphasizes on how to train a child, how to make sure the child grows holistically. Means uh, in terms of mental, physical, and also the spiritual. Okay, so Ibn Sina in the book The Canon, so he mentioned that child um, must to take care well by the parents, mean by the mother and father. So the child is under the supervision and under the guidance of the of the parents. So in the states before the six years old means the zero years until six years old, the child uh, must be take care well. Okay, so when we mention about the zero years old, so Ibn Sina mentioned that the mothers should take care of the child in the womb. Yes, in the womb, take care well of it. Oh, because because the mother might influence the child's growth in the yes in the womb. So this is in terms of the mother should take care of her food, of her nutrients. And her emotion because this will affect the child's development in the womb. Okay, so when the child has born, the mother has give birth to the child. To the child. Okay, so the thing that must take care or must uh, emphasize on is the child's growth in terms of emotion. So um, the parents should give emotional support to the child, and then. And then also, in Islam, yes, that's why, yeah, that's why I mentioned about Islam education is very, very holistic. I touch about the spiritual, about materialism, about the physical, about the mental, about the emotion, about the everything. Okay, so Ibn Sina, in the book The Canaan, she mentioned that the child before six years old must, uh, the parents must give the opportunity to the child to play means allocate some time to the child to play. Yes, at least one at least one hour one week. Play, play, play means this to uh, this is to create the creativity to the child and also to develop the mental capability and also the emotional capability and also the physical capability of the students or of the child or of the children. Okay, so this is before the six years old and after uh, Ibn Sina mentioned that before six years old. It is important uh, to develop the criteria or attitude of the child. Okay, so after six years old, uh, Ibn Sina mentioned um, that um, child or children must do exercise regularly. Means take care of his physical well and take care of his mental well. And this is through the exercise. So Ibn, Miss, Ibn Sina mentioned in the book the canon because this is the very important to enhance the development of the child or of the people so yeah education in islam does not focus really on spiritual no no focus more on spiritual and mental and intellectual physical holistically we focus on so yeah that's the big difference between the islamic education and the Western education, Islamic education, uh, there are spiritualism in the education, but in the Western, they are lack and they are the absence of the spiritualism in their education. Okay, so there there are really, really, really lot of Muslim perspective. Ibn Sina, Ibn Khaldun, Imam Ghazali, Al Farabi. So I will not mention all of it because yes, I have to cut out this video. So. If you want to know more, uh, you can click the other video uh, in the below. So you can click the other video to know about the other Islamic philosophers on uh, their views on the education. Okay, so yes, uh, I just want all of you to view, to broaden your view. The Islamic education does not only on spiritualism, but it is holistically. Okay, so Islamic education is much more stable and uh, because we our reference or our what we call our main source of knowledge is from the revealed knowledge means from the quran and from the asuna why the westerns they more depends on the 
yeah, the ability of reasoning means on their mind or on their thoughts. So humans have very unique thoughts. Everyone have different views and perspectives. So this, so yeah, this is why the Western's perspective or the Western's education always change because they only depend on the ability of reasoning. So yeah, so Alhamdulillah. So yeah, this is uh what what I want to share with you that do not do not do not make your view a uh, titan only on spiritualism, Islam spiritualism only. No, but Islam is holistically develop the education, all of terms in all of terms. Okay, so okay, so yeah. So I I want to highlight that yeah Islam has its importance on education. Um, so we know that even knowledge is from Allah. So all the knowledge is from Allah. Everything is from Allah, right? Okay. So do not ever 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 forget to always pray to Him to let you to seek more knowledge. Allah Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Rabbana zidna ilman warzuqna fahman wasi'a That's why people always pray to Allah uh, this dua this type of dua because they believe we believe we believe that everything from Allah knowledge is from Allah but the different is uh, the means the way we get the knowledge might un indirectly from Allah but it is true from Allah means we, get, we might get it from books or from lecturers or from teachers or from our parents but the knowledge itself is still from the God. Yes, we receive it indirectly uh, through others. Okay, so that's the sharing from me about the Muslim perspective of education. So Muslims very very emphasizes on the importance of education so we Muslim should acquire knowledge. In the hadith, Acquiring knowledge, seeking knowledge is worthy, is a compulsory to all the Muslims. So, okay everyone, do not forget to watch the other videos we do where we discuss about um, the philosopher perspective on education which is Al-Farabi, Ibn Sina, Ibn Khaldun and Ibn Khazali. So, yeah, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.